Hi, Roy Williams with Airframe Components, and today we have episode four of the uh, Piper Aero restoration. Uh, as you know, last time, uh, last episode, we had it up on the jacks, did a gear swing. After that, we got the aircraft airworthy, and uh, we delivered it to uh, Muncie Aviation here in Muncie, Indiana. Uh, when we brought the aircraft down, it was in green condition, no interior, no insulation, only one seat in there for the pilot, a minimum of avionics. Uh, in, in an effort to uh, make the uh, avionics install as simple as possible. Uh, nothing to uh, have to take out, nothing to have to keep clean, to worry about scratches. Uh, everything's wide open here. As you can see, the, uh, the door is removed and make it easier to, uh, for the technicians to get in and install. Uh, we worked with Muncie Aviation uh, previously on other projects. We decided to use them again. Uh, Muncie Aviation has quite a uh, reputation as far as being a premier uh, avionics installation shop. Uh, today I have with me Bill Roundtree, the uh, manager here at uh, Muncie Aviation. And uh, Bill, give me a little history of Muncie Aviation as far as how long has Muncie Aviation been around, how long has the avionics shop been here, uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, well Muncie was originally formed by uh, Edmund Ball and uh, made the Ball Jars, that family. And uh, they started the airport in 1932 and uh, started selling Piper Cubs and uh, went fr from there. And then in 1954, uh, they started a radio shop and uh, started, uh, back then, a lot of aircraft came from the factory with uh, no aircraft radios in them, you know. And uh, so they were installing radio packages. Back then, it'd be the Narco 2 Mark 12 radios and stuff that uh, you'd be uh, putting in. And uh, so that, took off from 1954 till today and um, about 11 years ago uh, after Mr. Ball passed away um, it was always his this has always been kind of a family oriented company and so Mr. Ball wanted the employees to own it. A lot of us have been here a long time uh, since the 70s and um, so it became a employee owned company about 11 years ago. Things are going good. Um, now we sell Piper, or the oldest Piper dealer. Uh, we sell the Cicada uh, TBM series aircraft, and we sell the uh, Kodiak Quest aircraft now. And then we maintain, and we're a Cessna service center, we maintain about any airplane that'll come in here. We've been an employee owned company now for 11 years, and that's gone real well for us. And um, uh, of course, uh, all the employees see the incentive in being that way. So uh, we like to think that uh, we're all here to help each other and the customer. And um, uh, myself, I've been here since 1979 and uh, started out doing installations, uh, just ripping planes like this apart and putting the full package in, uh, making panels. Now we have CNC machines that make them. but. Uh, We've got uh, a lot of young people we're bringing into the market to get them trained on it and uh, into the industry, and that's, that's going pretty well. Well, Muncie Aviation has quite a reputation as being an avionics inst uh, installation facility. Uh, of course, uh, the AOPA Cherokee 6 giveaway, that's been some years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a recent article about a twin Comanche that uh, you guys have done all the avionics on that as well. I'm sure there's plenty of other different stories you have as well. On average, how many projects, how many uh, installation projects does uh, Muncie Aviation do in a year's time? Well, I'd say off the cuff, we probably do about 250 plus a year. Major retrofits, um, and that's anything simple from a, a transponder installation, or uh, of course now with the ADSB mandate, there's a lot of that going on. Anything from that to complete retrofit, um, similar to what we're doing to the Arrow. Uh, something of this caliber, we probably do 20 to 30 a year. Complete uh, panel yeah. tear outs and upgrades. Makeovers, yeah. And um, with the expense of the new aircraft, a lot of owners find out mm -hmm. that uh, just retrofitting it is uh, a more economical way to go and they still get the latest technology. Putting it on a proven airframe. Right. Correct. Well, thank you so much. So I have with me Lee Dwiggins. He's the chief inspector here at uh, Muncie Aviation, and he's been uh, the main uh, guy on the front lines for this uh, project. Is that correct? That's correct. So, all right. So 
So we brought the airplane in and uh, we'd started doing some of the ripping and tearing on there and then uh, you apparently took over from there and gutted the panel. Yep. So how does this differ or how is this similar? Uh, what's the typical protocol on uh, doing a project like this as far as where do you begin? Well, like you said, first thing we start out is taking all the old equipment out. Once we get all the old equipment out, we take all the old wiring out. Once we get all that out, then we start mapping out where the antennas go. And we'll map out on the fuselage where they go. Get all those all mounted in, and then we start wiring the package. Okay. So now, at what point do you stop tearing out wires? Uh, I mean, obviously there's a few wires left in there, but uh, do you tear it all the way down to the, the bus bar or to the circuit breakers? Where, do, where does it stop? Any wire associated with the equipment that we remove, we take out. So yeah, we'll take it all the way down to the bus bar. Okay, okay. And so uh, you talked about mapping out the uh, antennas. Of course, uh, on this aircraft, we put a new uh, top skin on here, new belly skins on here, taking all the old antenna locations out. So essentially giving you a, uh, a clean uh, palette to start with. Then. Uh, is there any particular um, uh, preferred method of uh, putting the antennas up there? Of course, the GPS now. And, uh, 406 ELTs, things like that, as far as which goes on top, which goes on bottom, things like that. Well, yeah, the GPS antennas go on top. <clears throat> then the uh, like marker beacon, beacon will go on the bottom. You put one comm antenna up top, one comm antenna on bottom. Just common sense, basically. So in an attempt to make it as fast as possible and sleek as possible, we're still having to put antennas up there if we want to have the radios to uh, go places. Correct. Sure, sure. And then... Uh, on this one here, we also, besides the wiring, uh, we did some maintenance issues as well, uh, some uh, control cables, things like that. And then, uh, then you start with a new panel. We actually took the whole panel out of there, going with a whole new solid panel. So when you do a new panel installation, how do you draw that up? How do you cut it? How do you label it? Uh, what's the process in a, uh, coming up with a new panel? Once we get the layout from the customer, we have a machine called a Panel Pro. And we'll draw it up on there. It gives the dimensions of all the equipment, the instruments and all that. We'll draw it up on there, get a rough draft, get the customer to approve it. And then we'll actually get a piece of aluminum, lay it out there, and the machine cuts it all for us. So we've totally taken out the existing substructure and uh, just leave the support brackets and then the whole new panel goes right over the top of that. Then. Correct. Nice. So we, uh, moving around here to the panel on the aircraft, give us a kind of a walkthrough of uh, what all uh, different radios we installed here. Uh, when you and I uh, talked when we first brought the aircraft in, we wanted to leave the uh, steam gauges in place. I didn't want to go with a full glass panel, but we did want to upgrade the avionics. Give us a walkthrough of what all uh, you've done, uh, different uh, radios you put in there, different equipment, and uh, what your intentions are from here on out to finish up the project. Sure. Well, on the instruments, we replaced the airspeed with a new airspeed, a rebuilt one. We put in an MD-93 USB clock. The turn coordinator is new, comes with your 55X autopilot. The, digit, the directional gyro, that's a replacement there. The altimeter, we sent that out, had a new face plate put on it. Vertical speed indicator, that's a new one for this aircraft. The GI-106 is your nav indicator for your GTN 750. Your KI-209 is your nav indicator for your KX-165. And over here we got the GTN 750, and behind that is the uh, audio panel, the GA-35. Then your KX-165 navcom. Then we have your EDM 930, which is your engine display. Down here, we took all the old switches out, put in new Piper lighted switches. So you got all your primary switches over here, your master, your start button, left mag, right mag, alternator, pit out heat, are gonna be all your light switches, plus your avionics master. Then moving over, we got a USB port here that we installed. Down here, as you can see hanging down there is your old circuit breaker panel. We cut a new circuit breaker panel so we can put clicks on resettable circuit breakers in. 
Then over here is going to be your 55X autopilot and then a bank of dimmer switches. So it isn't just a matter of taking out an old radio or taking out an instrument. It's a matter of overhauling each individual component as well then. And then, uh, of course, the new uh, items going in and then also uh, modern upgrades with uh, USB ports, uh, charging docks, things like that as well. That's correct. And the Garmin 750, uh, the GTN 750 we're putting in here, will complement uh, the GTN 650 that we have in the, uh, the other aircraft. And so therefore, moving back and forth from one aircraft to another should be uh, minimal as far as uh, differences in the systems. Is that correct? That's correct. They both work primarily the same. The 650 just have a, has a smaller screen. All their functions are exactly the same. So on the... Uh, GTN 750, we chose that uh, station uh, to complement the GTN 650 that we have in uh, the other aircraft, the Cessna 150. Uh, the idea being is that way, uh, they have similar systems and minimize uh, differences moving back and forth from one aircraft to another, is that correct? That's correct. The 750 is the same thing as the 650. All the functions are exactly the same, it just has a bigger screen to it. So the digital engine monitor will take the place of all the analog uh, instruments and uh, display everything digitally. And then I assume there's also a, uh, a backup or a storage of uh, uh, history as you know, showing any spikes or any uh, trends, let's say, in the uh, engine. Yes, the database right here keeps all that information stored. So if you do have an exceedance of any type, you can take that out, download it, and get a good idea of what happened. And then uh, on the throttle quadrant, we uh, all new uh, handles on there as well. And uh, of course, we have new yokes to go in here, uh, new uh, covers and labels, things like that as well. Uh, in the back of the aircraft for the passengers, I assume we're putting in USB ports there as well, and uh, reading lights or uh, lighting back there for the, for the back half of the compartment. Is that correct? That's correct. So we're both going to have microphone jacks. USB ports, all of it. Good, good. Well, we're sure excited to uh, uh, see this project come along here. I was here a couple weeks to look at it, and it was a, a bunch of wires coming out through the panel, so the uh, project's picking up speed here as we get toward the end. Uh, from this point here, we're at, uh, coming up on September of 2016 here, over the last week of August. Uh, about how much longer do you anticipate uh, to finish this project up here? We should be wrapping up within two weeks. Okay. Next week, the autopilot's going to go in, and after that, it's going to go by quick. And then, uh, of course, no interior to go back in, so at that point, it's just a matter of putting the seat back in, and we fly it away and get it out of your hair then. That's right. Well, that's it for today's episode. Uh, we're sure looking forward to uh, getting this project completed and getting the aircraft back uh, to the shop. Uh, after that, we'll be uh, starting to put the interior in, and then uh, after that, we'll be going to paint to uh, start finishing the project up. Stay tuned for further installments of the Piper Aero Restoration Project.